Hello everyone, myself Vidisha Dutta, a student of Lakhimpur College of Veterinary Science, shall be discussing today on the topic Contagious Bovine Pleuropneumonia. Now, before we proceed further, this is a disclaimer that this presentation has been prepared to the best of abilities of the undergrad students of Lakhimpur College of Veterinary Science to provide as much as accurate information as possible. We do not, however, encourage people to use this information provided in the presentation for any scientific work without cross-verification of data. Further, the information provided in the presentation should not be used for treatment without consulting a registered practitioner. It is strictly for educational purpose and not for commercial use. With that being said, let's move forward. Introduction Contagious bovine pleuropneumonia is also termed as CBPP, lung plague, lung sickness. It is an acute, subacute, clinically inapparent or chronic disease characterized by formation of massive pathological changes in the thoracic organ, especially lungs and pleura. It's a disease of bovine not communicable to other species. Now, let us discuss about the etiology of this disease. The disease is caused by Mycoplasma mycoides, subspecies mycoides. This organism was previously denoted as Asterococcus mycoides. The organism is pleomorphic in nature, occur in rings, globules, filamentous and in bizarre form. The organism can be stained by gymsa stain. In broad media, positive culture appears turbid after three days of incubation, while growth on solid media is slower. The organism is sensitive to all environmental influences, including disinfectants, heat, and drying. Epidemiology of CBPP Prevalence of infection It is reported to be endemic in most parts of Eastern Europe and Asia. The disease has been reported from India in bovines in 1990. Morbidity rate is very high that is 90% and mortality rate is 50%. 25% of infected cattle remain as recovered carrier. CBPP is the most economically important disease in cattle in Africa and has been imposed directly due to mortality. Decreased milk yield, vaccination, disease surveillance and research program and less due to quarantine, loss of trait, and fatal nature of the disease. Let us now discuss about the susceptible host of this disease. Cattle are the only species predominantly affected by the organism. However, natural infection also occurs in a wide variety of animal, such as buffalo, yak, bison, reindeer, and antelopes. In sheep and goat, infection causes local cellulitis without pulmonary movement. No difference in susceptibility of Bos indicus and Bos taurus cattle was observed. While discussing a disease, the most important point is the mode of transmission. The infection spreads through inhalation of infected droplets. Expired breath contains large number of organisms and thus spread the infection to close contact susceptible cattle. Inanimate materials do not help in disease transmission. Hot and humidity influence spread of disease. Frequent coughing induces the germ to close approximated cattle. Spread is maximum in household cattle and in cattle which are kept in close contact. Recovered cattle acts as the carrier. They continue to harbor the organism in sequestra, in necrotic areas, encircled by connective tissue capsule of previously affected lungs. Such cattle are called lungers. 
large number of organisms are excreted through urine. Spread may also occur through discharges from local tail lesions resulting from vaccination with virulent culture. Let us now discuss about the pathogenesis of this disease. The organisms enter the bronchioles via respiratory tract. It remains in the retropharyngeal gland from where invasion is possible. Inflammation of the bronchiolar walls takes place. Passing through these walls, organisms enter the interlobular septa. When again, inflammation is augmented, followed up by edema, which causes dilation and subsequent thrombosis of lymph vessels. Inflammatory process subsequently spread to the lung alveoli. Setting of Crupus pneumonia, which is manifested by red, red hepatization, followed by grey hepatization. Spread of inflammation to the branches of pulmonary artery causes thrombosis, which leads to anemia. Such necrosed area becomes clearly demarcated and circumscribed by fibrinous tissue. Isolated and enclosed lesion is called sequestrum. Moving forward, let us discuss about the clinical findings of this disease. There are four forms. Number one is the paracute form. In this form, the affected cattle may die in a week after onset of respiratory distress. Number two is the acute form. Incubation period in this form is three to six weeks. It is characterized by onset of high fever, a fall in milk yield, anorexia, and cessation of rumination. Severe depression, animals stand apart or lag behind other group. Calf at the initial period during exercise, thoracic pain, disinclined to move, standing with the elbow out, arced back condition, shallow and rapid respiration with expiratory grunting. Pain avenged on percussion of chest, Auscultation reveals a pleuritic friction. Sounds in early stages, dull, dullness, fluid sounds, gurgling sounds, noise in later stages of infection. Edematous swelling of throat and dewlap, swelling on large movable joints. In cuffs, vulvular endocarditis and myocarditis are noticed. In fatal cases, that may occur at a variable course for several days to three weeks. Number three, chronic form. Recovered animal may be clinically normal, but in some animal, inactive sequestrum forms in the lungs with a necrotic center of sufficient size to produce toxemia causing unthriftiness, chronic cough, mild res respiratory distress on exercise. The sequester commonly break down when the animal is exposed to environmental stress and cause an acute attack of disease. Number four is the subacute form. Lesions in this form are not prominent. Infections reach the alveoli, set up inflammatory reactions, leading to formation of edema, along with infiltration of lymphocytes, plasma cells, and macrophages. Moving forward to the diagnosis of this disease. Diagnosis is based on the following considerations. Number one, history. History includes prolonged incubation period, history of contact with infected animal. Number two is the clinical findings. It refers to the typical signs of respiratory involvement. Number three, culture. It includes culture of organism in spatial media. Number four, dark filled microscopy. It helps to differentiate mycoplasma in the pleural limb. Number five is the precipitation test. Agar gel double diffusion method is a reliable test. Number six is the agglutination test. This test can be adopted in the field on suspected population. This test is also useful for screening out the vaccinated population. Number seven is the fluorescence antibody test. This test 
has been used successfully for detection of mycoplasma antigen in culture and antibody in sera then comes the animal inoculation test subcutaneous inoculation of suspected material from affected cow will produce large edematous swelling at the site differential diagnosis this disease can be differentiated from pneumonic pasteurellosis tuberculosis and pneumonia now comes the treatment there is no any specific treatment available for contagious bovine pleuropneumonia however use of antibiotics have been found effective for controlling the secondary bacterial infection oxytetracycline and chloramphenicol are some commonly available antibiotics that have got some effect since we all know that prevention is better than cure so there are certain steps under prevention and control under prevention there is vaccination of in contact cattle vaccination of healthy cattle disposal of sick cattle in an epidemic outbreak revaccination of cattle at risk under control there are disposal of all the sick and contacted animal at herd level there is removal of sources of infection by identification of infected animal necessary to do at least two negative test at two months interval before the herd is classified as free from infection and vaccination of all animals at risk these are the resources that are followed we have came to the end of presentation hope it was an informative one thank you